of your griefs, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite the adults to be seated and the children to come forward. turn right at the next block, but then you don't know where you're going after that. But sometimes it's also true in life that we're not sure what's going to happen next, right? We, we don't know what September's going to be like when you have new teachers or a new school or things change. But the Bible tells us that God will lead us. God will be with us and taking care of us and guiding us every step of the way. Maybe not, maybe God won't tell us what it's all going to turn out like, but each step of the way, God will be with us, guiding us, and leading us. And especially when times are scary or uncertain, that's a good thing to remember, that God will be with you, and that God will lead you, and God will love and protect you in the middle of your journeys and the middle of your life. Let us pray. God, please help us to remember that you are with us, that you lead us and guide us. And when we're frightened or scared because we don't know what the next step looks like, help us to trust that you are still with us, that you will protect us and show us the way, and that your love will be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I think Miss Vicky is willing to uh, to uh, take you downstairs for a little while. So please remember to say thank you to her. From the book of Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. 
even though you make many prayers. I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Portions of Psalm 50 are found in your readings in Psalm. Our God who have come and not keep silence. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God Our Lord will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Our Lord will come and will not keep silence. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. Our Lord, God, and God is Hear my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. Our God, God, and God. Consider this well, you who forget God, lest I rend you. Um, and there be none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. But to those who keep in my way, I will show the salvation of God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by our faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed, and when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confess that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, indeed he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 
Please be seated. One glorious sunny day a couple weeks ago when I was out on the west coast, we lingered on a quiet beach admiring the pebbles on the shore polished smooth by the ocean. The harbor seals were sunning themselves on a rocky outcrop some distance from the shore. And as we ambled along the beach, we picked up bits of sea glass, broken glass that had been etched and frosted, smooth by being tossed by the waves against the rocks. And all the while, directly above us, on the balcony of a million dollar plus house, a man talked non-stop about a potential business deal, how much he would realize from the sale, certain financing arrangement, market outcomes, etc. I think he was so absorbed by his finances that he missed out on the incredible beauty of the surroundings, the sky and the sea, the warmth of the sun, the scent of the ocean, the refreshing breeze each unique pebble on the earth. <coughs> Jesus invites us to pay attention, commands us even to, be, to live wide awake, paying attention to God's gifts in the moment. For it's God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, to give us the unfailing treasure of heaven, Jesus is saying that we can know the life-giving presence of God here and now in this life, even in the midst of sorrow and suffering. God gives us daily everything we need for life, his presence, his love. What incredible treasure God gives inexhaustible creation, limitless grace, relentless mercy, enduring purpose, fathomless love. And yet we so often miss what God gives generously because we're paying attention to the wrong things. We are like the person staring at their phone, walking along, oblivious to all the beauty, love, and life around them. So if you want to know God's presence, God's love, God's gracious activity in our midst, sell your possessions and give to those in need, Jesus says. For what you invest in, you pay attention to. And if you invest in what God does, giving graciously to all, then you will notice God at work around you. The prophet Isaiah says, learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. If you do these things, if you invest in these, your heart, your mind, and your spirit will be open to receive the gifts of God's presence in our world. For as Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus means us to live with what we might call wakeful readiness, to be part of what God is doing to restore, renew, and heal our world. Jesus says that we are to be like servants waiting for the master to return from the wedding banquet. For when we are awake and ready, when the master comes, he will serve them dinner. So if we pay attention, live wide awake and ready, we will notice God's presence and the gifts God has to give us. Life, love, joy, peace. Says the writer of the Hebrews, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. If you already have something in hand, 
You don't need to hope for it. We hope for things that have not yet come about. And faith is about trusting that God will ultimately restore, renew, and heal all of creation, human society, and the earth itself. And meanwhile, we live in wakeful readiness, rejoicing at the signs of God's healing and restoration already in progress. Now, admittedly, that can be difficult at times. The news, the internet, movies, advertising, all these things fan the flames of our fear. Our fear that we won't have enough of what we need. That everything is going from bad to worse. And as Christian people, we need to practice instead living wide awake to God's presence in our lives. Prayer, worship, reading and study of scriptures, receiving the bread and wine of the Eucharist, all train us to live in wakeful readiness to share in God's kingdom. And there's another helpful daily spiritual practice that um, I, I've come to be appreciate more deeply called the examine that trains us to recognize on a daily basis God's presence in all aspects of our lives. This prayer invites us to notice and give thanks for the times in which we have given and received love this day, where we have known hope and joy, and also to recognize and uh, reflect on those moments when we felt drained and drawn away from God's love. If you want to know more about this prayer practice, I'd be happy to share that with you. Do not be afraid, says Jesus, for it's God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. God gives us everything we need for life, limitless grace, relentless mercy, enduring purpose, fathomless love. And God frees us from fear, fear that we don't have enough, that we might be wide awake to God's presence. God frees us from fear of scarcity, that we might be generous to others, from fear of condemnation, so that we can forgive others from fear of falling short, of failing, of being unacceptable, so that we can live for our neighbors, sharing with others the good news that God is pleased to give us, to give all of us the kingdom, God's presence and love here and now and in the world to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.